I'm going to ask Christian to come up here. Oh, it's so good to see you standing up. Last I saw was a picture of you laid out. I mean, you are a miracle. I know that you know that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All I'm going to say, I'll let him tell his story, but we received a message. Has it been two weeks yet? Not even, I don't think. Not two weeks yet, I don't February think. February 4th was the day I crashed, and I got out of surgery, like, February 7th, I think. Okay, you're gonna have to hold this real close. All right, I got you. Okay, well, I'll let you. I'll let you tell your story. Go ahead and why don't you just go ahead and share your story? This is Christian, and he is he's a miracle, and um, I'm gonna let him just share his story. Hold the mic nice and close so that everybody can hear you properly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank Pastor Nick for letting me up here and sharing it. And I'd like to pray that all y'all hear me clearly because, you know, I, I don't have all my front teeth. I like to change up my look a lot, you know. <laughs> and then uh, I pray that at least one person here today or online, uh, just I get to change their life, you know. And they, they get something about what I'm saying. Um... So I want to start it off with before I got in the crash, the type of life I was living, so you guys know how God changed me and the type of life I'm living now. Uh, before I got in the crash, I left my dad's house out of, uh, you know, rebellion. And uh, I didn't really care about anything. I was selling drugs, doing drugs, got into gun violence, you know, and was just, doing everything God didn't want me to do. Uh, and what happened February 4th, I just picked up my car and I was driving back home from uh, up Cooney Road. This is how it happened. Uh, I was driving up Cooney Road and I w there was a blue Mercedes in front of me. I still remember everything. Uh, so I was riding behind the blue Mercedes and the blue Mercedes, it braked super hard. So I braked super hard. And as soon as I braked super hard, my tires, it started spinning out to the right. So I tried to straighten it out and I pushed my thing all the way to the left and then I heard a big pop. So I think my steering rod broke, I don't know. Cause when I tried to put it back over to the right to put it out, it just kept steering to the left. So, um, it started veering off to the left and I see a, a white Ford Ranger truck coming towards me and I crashed right into it. And uh, that's all I remember. And I just remember hitting the truck and my lip hit right on my steering wheel. And my steering wheel is an aftermarket steering wheel. It's a quick release, so it comes off and on. Uh, and it doesn't have an airbag. So, uh, you know, if I had an airbag, you know, I probably would have been in better shape, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so, I actually didn't knock out. I hit the steering wheel, and I looked around, and I had blood just coming all the way down my, my shirt. I should have brought the shirt today because I still got it, blood all over it, and you know, but blood was going all over, and I just felt my whole entire face numb. And as soon as that happened, I'm screaming. I keep screaming for somebody to get me out the car. Nobody was coming for like five minutes straight. So I started trying to get out the car myself. I started punching the windows. I broke the window, and I was trying to get out the passenger side because the door wasn't open and it was jammed shut. So I tried to, I was trying to get out the window and I feel extreme pain in my leg. I didn't even realize my leg was broken. Uh, I looked down and my tibia and my fibula was hanging out the side of my leg and my leg was just dangling. Wow. Yeah. So I was like, well, this ain't going to work. I sat back down. <laughs> I put my hands on the steering wheel and I bowed my head and I said, God, 
Uh, if it's my time to go, just please make sure you send me to heaven and not hell. That's all I ask, you know. And I said, if it's not my time, just please make sure I, just please help me get out this car. I opened my eyes and I wasn't in the car no more. I was on the curb. So somebody pulled me out the car. It was an angel or God or something. And I asked, I even asked the paramedics to make sure. And they said, no, you were already on the curb when we got there. Nobody was around. So, you know, God pulled me out of my car. Uh, and just breathing was the hardest thing ever in there because I got so much blood. But I knew what to do. I just kept trying to cough up as much blood as I could so I didn't swallow it and inhale it and end up killing myself. So while I was in there, I felt like I, was, I felt my heart rate just starting to stop and I was trying to breathe and they were telling me to keep breathing, keep breathing. And I felt somebody rubbing on my back. I looked over and my dad's right there and he wasn't even in there. And then uh, I looked into the corner of the ambulance and God was in the corner just smiling at me. And then um, uh, I go to the gym. I used to go to the gym every day before the crash. And I flip this big 400 pound tire every time. And it takes all my energy to do it. And I have all my friends usually that go to the gym with me. And they're screaming, one more. Come on, Christian. Keep going. Keep going. Push yourself. You can do it one more. And that's all I heard. And that's what kept me awake um, while I was in there was, my dad rubbed on my back when he wasn't even in the ambulance the whole time. Seeing God in the corner smiling at me, comforting me, and uh, just hearing all my friends scream, come on, Chris, you got one more. Uh, you can do it, you got one more. So I stayed awake all the way until like three minutes getting to the hospital. The paramedics, they told me that they were all like, you did it, Christian, you're almost there. In three minutes, we'll have uh, new blood pumping into your system because I lost so much blood. And we'll have you on life support and have oxygen pumping into you. As soon as you said that, I, I passed out. I was like, nope, I ain't got to wait no longer than I got to. <laughs> <laughs> if you told me I'm, I'm saved, then I'm done. I'm, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> so I, I fell asleep, and I just felt so much comfort after that. And I remember I fell asleep. After that, all I saw was light for a while. I just saw light. I thought I was going to heaven. Uh, and then it turned to darkness. And I felt uh, a burning sensation going all the way up my back. Uh, just heat, a lot of heat going all the way up my back. And I felt the worst feeling I've ever felt in my life. Worse than the pain in my leg I felt. It's not a worldly feeling though. It was a feeling while I was knocked out. I still remember the feeling, but I can't, I can't describe it. It was the worst feeling and the worst, like, spirit, you know, that I had around me. I just wanted to roll up in a ball and die. I wanted to die, you know? Wow. And I had, like, I was trying to breathe and I couldn't breathe. It was, uh, like, it was like, but I only get that, like, every five minutes. And I just constantly felt like I was gonna die, but I couldn't die, you know? It was the worst feeling I've ever felt in my life. And I felt that for a while. And then all of a sudden, um, I see God in front of me. And God said he gave me the smallest amount he could have given me of what it feels like without him. Wow. So, yeah. And that really, uh, he gave me the smallest amount. That's the smallest amount. And that's the worst pain I've ever felt in my whole entire life. So me, I know what it feels like without God now. And I, mm -hmm. I want to be with him for the rest of my life, you know? Amen. And I want to follow him. And uh, he gave me a choice after he said that. And he said, uh, I can take you to heaven now. And you can go down to heaven with me and be with me. Or you can uh, go back down and you can serve me. And I'm going to show you uh, what great things are going to do for me and uh, what's going to happen. So all of a sudden, it just gave me a flash through really quickly. But I understood everything. It's like he was telling me every single thing. 
uh, through the little flip through of what it all meant and what it meant. She didn't tell me everything, but what I saw first was I saw a big, huge house and more money than I could ever, like, I didn't even know what to do with. And I saw, he, first off, he said that the girl I'm with right now, she's my wife. Wow. And uh, she's amazing. She's back there, yeah. Anna. Yeah. But um, she's so caring. She cares about everybody else before herself. And yeah. she is so loving, and she cares so much about me. I've never had anybody ever uh, care uh, about me than she does. But she's just a blessing from God, and I love her so much. Yeah. But um, then he showed me crowds around me, crowds following me, big, huge crowds, and me talking to big, huge crowds. And then he showed me a whole bunch of buildings, warehouses, big, huge units, and he said I owned them all, but I don't know what they were for. I don't know what they were. I will find out soon, but right now I just... I don't know. He never told me that. He just showed me the buildings and said they were mine. Wow. That's all I know. But after that, uh, he asked me do I could go up to heaven or I could stay whatever. And I told him I wanted to go back to earth. And I wanted to live for him. And I wanted to uh, lead people to Jesus. And um, right after that, he said he's going to be with me the whole time. Just uh, seek me. And don't get in, don't don't get into the temptations of the devil. And right after that, um, I just woke up and I felt a hole in my neck. They put a trach in my neck uh, so I could breathe because my whole entire mouth was so swollen shut, and my eyes were swollen shut. I could barely see. I could barely open my eyes to see. But I woke up, not being able to breathe, trying to get air. Well, I felt like I couldn't breathe. They had an oxygen tank connected to it, and I obviously could breathe, but it was in my mind because I just woke up, and I was coughing up blood and a whole bunch of mucus. I'm freaking out in the ICU. I'm looking around. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm alive. And I'm pressing the little thing for the nurses to come in that I'm awake, and they came in, and I was in so much pain. I just remember coughing up hella blood and hella... Uh, mucus, mucus, but yeah, after that, um, it was just blessing after blessing after that, uh, God and all my friends and my girl and everybody coming, all the supporters, all you guys, you know, it, it pushed me to fight harder and, uh, recover, and, you know, they said a lot of people, when they get into crashes like this, They'd still be in the hospital right now. They got to go into rehab to make sure that whatever. I was out in a week, week and a half, you know? And I was um, completely, I'm completely, you know, for God now. I love yeah. the Lord. I have no temptation yes. to do no yes. drugs, alcohol, nothing. I just, Amen. I want to live fully for Him and I want to lead people to the Lord, you know? And I want to, you know, I want to do my calling. Yeah. Yeah. So now, now I'm back doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and I'm living with my dad again. Thank you. And, you know, I've never been more happier. And uh, my heart, you know, I had a hole in my heart for the longest time that, like, I couldn't feel. And it's, it's real now, you know. Amen. So, thank you, guys. That's everything. Father, we just pray for Christian right now. And I thank you, Lord, that there's no turning back. I thank you, Lord, that he, all of the words that you've spoken over him will come to pass. And all of the things that you showed him will come to pass. And I thank you, Lord, that he'll be a mighty man of God for you. And that his whole family will be touched, his friends. I thank you, Lord, that there would be people that will come in. And, Lord, that he'll, that this testimony, Lord, will change the lives of many. Yes. Change the lives of many. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
bless him and heal him now in Jesus' name. You know, um, a couple of weeks before, maybe three weeks before this accident happened, I talked to Christian and I said to him, Christian, I know you love the Lord, but why aren't you serving the Lord like you want, like you can? And he said, well, I'm just, I'm in this lifestyle. And he said, I've got these friends and they're loyal to me and I'm loyal to them and I pull them down and they pull me down. And, but they're such good people that I can never abandon them. And he said, it's just, it's my friends. And, you know, the Lord did not cause this to happen. His choices got him there. But now, in the midst of it, the Lord touched him. And I believe that from now on, he's not just going to be a sponge soaking in, but he's going to be a leader amongst his friends. And that we'll see them in church, more and more of them. And experience Jesus just like what he has. Yes. Amen. Yeah, I thought I'd never be accepted if I tried to, you know, do my own thing and do it the Lord. But now I'm leading my friends to the Lord. And yeah. God had to break me down to my all-time love for me to uh, understand and realize, you know, how much I need him. Yeah. And how amazing he is, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. you know. I'm nothing without him. Nobody's anything without him, you know. Y'all need him. So, that's all. Amen. Good job, Good job. 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 Good job.